Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode where we talk about why it's so difficult to talk about our own art. But before we get onto that, we want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters because it really does help us to keep this podcast going. And we'll thank all of you personally at the end of the show. We always appreciate the support. Not only does it help us towards the cost of running Kick in the Creatives, that helps us keep doing what we do, but it also shows that you like what we do. And saying that you like what we do, we've got a lovely review. Shall, Ooh, shall I read that one out? Yeah. And it says five stars, not enough stars. I love listening to you two chatter with Sandra and our laughing all the time. Oh, and I can practically hear Tara smiling. They are so entertaining and I make my best work with you around. Now, I said earlier, what they really mean is that I'm a miserable git. Am I allowed to say git? Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting in the background. Scowling. You know, what you what you really mean is you can you can practically hear Tara rolling her eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well actually funny enough, we were so excited to get another review and Tara read it out to me just before we started recording. And I was like, because what was the end bit again? And the end is it's it's this person who sent it has called themselves I Heart Tara and Sandra, and that's from Apple Podcasts in Canada. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And and I said, do you know what? Maybe you should just get a tattoo of I Heart. <laughs> you should take it one step further. Oh that's that's what you call real commitment. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't no, do don't it. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but thank you. Oh, honestly, when we get a review like that, it really does make our day. And uh, yeah, that's made my morning. Thank you very much. I have to go up on my um, note. Um, yeah, no board. What is it called? I can't remember what it's called. Is it a cork board? Notice board. That's what I'm trying to say. God, I can't say anything. Okay, so what else have we got? Oh, yes, social media. So loads and loads of people will be sharing their work for the challenges with us this month on social media, and I have loved them all, obviously. But uh, Heather Lynn Baskin, um, she's been doing the quick kick, ma- uh, quick kick May challenge, which is drawing with your non-dominant hand. And she's been doing those digitally, I assume, with Procreate. I think she's using her iPad because she was talking about her Apple Pencil the other day. Um, They've been so good and they've got this kind of subtle quality to them and really like lively lines. Have you seen them? They always look, in fact, at first I didn't realize they were digital. They had, um, they looked like they'd been sort of done on buff paper. Oh, no, haven't seen it. Yeah, but no, they're digital and they're really good. I really, really enjoy those. Um, Gabriella Pop, she did this coffee pot for the same challenge, the non-dominant hand challenge, and it was so quirky. I don't suppose you saw that, did you? Tara, yeah, where I are did. you? <laughs> I did see that one, and I really like that. Yeah, it was really quirky. There's I think something... I commented as well. Yeah, there was something about it. I don't know what it is about left-handed drawings, but, you know, I don't know. They have a real quirk about them. And it actually reminds me, I went into um, a, a really local little tiny gallery once um, in a town near me. And uh, had some lovely art in there. And there was one person that stood out. And I'm talking about 15 years ago, this must have been. And this one artist stood out. And I said, wow, this is such a quirky artist. And they'd done lots of London scenes, like with the gherkin and the walkie-talkie building, all those sort of things. And I said, what? you know, this person's really different and the woman behind the um the desk said oh that's so and so I don't know I don't remember the name and they um they draw the image with their non-dominant hand their left hand they're right-handed and so it's deliberately made to kind of look naive and um I don't know if perhaps at the time it wasn't something a lot of people did but yeah it really caught my eye and it kind of reminds me of that kind of thing so yeah I love these these um these non-dominant hand challenges do you know what i wonder i wonder if non-dominant hand if you kept on using your non-dominant hand Mm. i assume it would become quite dominant in the end i guess so yeah i guess so i I wonder if you'd lose the quirk after a while yeah maybe if you if you got too much if you got too good at it then you'd have to start using one of your toes wouldn't you your feet or something 
Yeah. Um, also, Lena Suomi, she posted a really eye-catching piece for the Blooming Marvelous May Challenge. And it was kind of like, um, it reminded me of pop art, you know, like the Andy Warhol stuff where it's done oh, in the yeah. little dots. Uh, really bright. I mean, you practically needed sunglasses to look at this piece. And, and it was kind of like an oriental scene of some people under this blossom tree. Oh, it's really gorgeous. Very eye-catching. Really enjoyed that one. What about you, Tara? What's caught your eye? Well, first of all, I, I keep thinking, well, we're going on about all these drawings we like and nobody knows if you just tune into the podcast you've no idea what we're talking about and what it is is we set challenges each month creative challenges so if you go to our website you can find all we're doing and, and people post this stuff on instagram and in our facebook group so i'm really loving esther arroyo sketches from miniature may she's i thought she was using pencil but it's charcoal uh i don't know if you've seen these they're just trees and a landscape yes i've seen them yeah so lovely. lovely yeah, yeah. And so tiny and yet so so good to me, yeah they look, look like they come out of a drawing book they're that, yes they're they that do. good like an instructional drawing book in a good way i mean that yeah and then also i really loved a digital painting by someone called and this is an instagram name karmic quota and it was a fantastic friday this week you know we had this um really cool looking woman with the funky hair yeah. Oh, the colourful hair. Yeah. And she'd she'd drawn she'd drawn hair, but she'd done it and it was like quite blocky. Oh, like I haven't seen just, that one. Oh, she just got really gorgeous colours in her skin and her mm. hair. I just really, really liked it. It kind of looked like it wasn't digital again. I think because she'd made it so blocky. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. have to try and find that one. Yeah. Really like that one. Anyway, I'm now gonna ask you what's new with you. Oh, <clears throat> right. Where are we? <laughs> I've lost my place. I'm just so indulged in the conversation, Tara, that I'm totally oh, lost. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. new with I you? Talk about being lost. <laughs> <laughs> talk about being lost. Okay, what is new with me? Uh, well, I lost interest in my latest pieces. No. Just for a while. Just for oh. a while, while I concentrated on having a mini confidence crisis and slash meltdown. <laughs> But I finally got back to them over the weekend. And now I've added my realism elements. It's kind of starting to make sense to me now what I was actually aiming for in the first place. So that's that's been an interesting process. And it's funny because um, I think I got, had a bit of a confidence crisis because I, I posted this, this picture of myself on, uh, I think it was Instagram, just bending over with um like a roller in my hand and the canvas was on the floor because it was a reasonably sized canvas and I wanted to gesso over my initial charcoal to sort of hold it to seal it I guess before I added anything else over the top and a few people said oh wow you're doing abstract and I'm thinking Oh no, do you know what? I've built this thing up so much like it's going to be this really loose, wild thing that I've kind of been lunging at and spattering with brushes and gesso and all this. And it's so not. And suddenly I thought, oh no, this is going to be one big letdown. So I kind of like, I, I kind of got that. That's why I had a bit of a confidence crisis. I thought, oh no, you know, everyone's going to think this and it's really not. No one so, doesn't think anything. I don't no. mean that in a bad way, but, no, you're, but you thinking, are right. you, yeah. you're thinking you've built this up to this big thing. But everyone will just see what you've done and they'll go, oh, no, I like that. They won't think <laughs> anything more. They won't think, oh, she said she was going to do this. <laughs> well, the, yeah, but the thing is, in my head, I was like, yeah. oh, no, I've built this up to be like this really loose, abstract piece. It's not, it's not at all. It's very, very, rep 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 well, I can't say the word, representational um, art, really. But... Um, yeah, I, I guess I will tell you what the point of it was when I finally show everyone <laughs> what I've done. But um, yeah, so I do, I do definitely need to kind of mess up the the background a bit. And yeah, it's been quite interesting. And I, yes, I have got more work to do on it. And but what's really interesting about this is that if I could say put a timer on from start to finish, because I've got two canvases on the go. Uh, from start to finish of where I at, where I was with a blank canvas and where I'm at now, um, 
if I worked on it solidly, this would have probably only took me about, I don't know, three hours. Really? Yeah. Including and, the realism you got so far? Well, yeah, because most, because really the background only took me about half an hour. Right. <laughs> uh, and the other bit was only, it's only because I've had to wait for the layers to dry. Do you yeah. see what I mean? That is, if you had a few on the go, you could co- achieve quite a lot, couldn't oh, you? Oh, gosh, yes, yes. Well, but, I, I, uh, if I did decide that I liked them and yeah. I wanted to do more, because I have actually got some more ideas already along similar lines. This ah. time, smaller pieces, though, on yeah. paper, but like really good quality watercolour paper with that's been gessoed. Yeah. So that, you know, it, more affordable art for people as well. That, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but well, I was can... just going to say to you, because if you can do, like, yours take days normally, don't they? And I'm not saying that's good or bad, like the speed, but mm. if you want to if you wanted to create something more, I guess, profitable even. Yeah, because the thing like is... like doing it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason realism art is, is not cheap because it takes bloody ages to do. Yeah. It really does. It's a lot of work involved in those kind of pieces. And, and it's not that there's not a lot of work in, I mean, the realism element, there is a lot of work that goes into this. And But I'm hoping it's just a bit different. I'm hoping it's a little bit different than what you've seen before. And I'm just, I'm already wondering if I did like this stuff, whether there would be a place for it on my website as a different side to my art, like do, call it a different kind of series, maybe. I don't yeah, know. I don't see why not. Because it's not that far. It's no, not like you have no. gone completely abstract. No, no, it's not. It, it's not. And um, like I say, I can make this more affordable for people who want art, but, you know, can't necessarily afford a few hundred pounds but they still want an original piece of art you know so we'll see we'll see and I'm also kind of excited. i think it might work as nfts because boobs and bums <laughs> i think do well <laughs> you know rob robbing to nabby uh rob myers he yeah. said i think felicity fizz would do well as <laughs> nfts <laughs> i don't think she would but he might do if you- if you- i don't think my realism art is working as nfts i haven't i haven't sort of um sold anything on it i think but when when you go on twitter and you look at nfts no one is selling nfts as realism art so it was a not yet not yet yet. maybe i'll be the first you never know i'm still plugging at it i'm still having a go but yeah maybe this sort of thing will be the thing i don't know yeah but uh yeah so anyway yeah what is new with me is um well i'm still just doing those plugging away yeah. yeah, yeah. What about you? What is new with you? Um, I have, I don't know if I've said this before, but I've got a bit of an addiction to acrylic ink at the moment. Did I say Ooh. that? Well, I've got some of those. Are they the ones, right, where they're kind of like in glass bottles and you've yeah. got a lid and then you've got like a little dropper thing you squeeze? Yes. Right. Well, I've got um, two lots of those. I think there's about nine in each one. Yeah. And I, I thought, oh, I, I must have a. A little look at those. I mean, I've had them for about, I don't know, six years, I think. Yeah. So I've gone to try and take the lids off and they're, they are they are welded on with acrylic. <laughs> and the one I did manage to get off, um, I only managed to get a dropper out. So I can't really What do you mean you them. only managed to get a dropper well, out? Well, the lid, the kind of lid stuck oh, on, but the dropper bit, it was really weird. And Paul, not, is he going to have like a pair of pliers or something you can get them open with? Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried um, doing that with when they're stuck with acrylic? It's absolutely impossible. I know it's without like breaking glue. the bottle. All right. That's so a shame. yeah, so I can't use them. So I've had they're brand new, but I can't oh, use no. them because they're just because that would have been perfect probably for what you're working on as well. Because if you want to get some real, what I like about it is I mean, you can get some real loose marks going. Yeah. So my faces, I'll either completely cover a thing, just make make a blue panel or a red panel or whatever with this ink yeah or i'll <clears throat> sort of draw with the bottle top the yeah. dropper thingy but what's nice is it gives you a starting point because you've got these i i will actually have a reference in front of me which it never looks like the reference because i deliberately don't make it look like it but i use it as a guide with a dropper yeah. and then spray it with water and run a brush over it and but I just, yeah, you're I just really, love. you're really um, embracing colour now, aren't you? But in such a different way than you used to, because you're when you scroll down to your 
oh, you know, the artwork you were doing, I don't know, on Instagram, you, you were, they were all ex- incredibly colourful. But yeah. what you're doing here is you're taking one may, one really punchy colour and then you're using a contrasting colour. An accent. An accent colour. <laughs> See, I'm going than... <laughs> to pull my art. <laughs> you're going to say juxtapose in a minute, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say juxtaposition. Um, yeah, you'd have to go back on a long, a long go yeah, episode yeah. to know what we're all about there. But yeah, so, but what it is is, it's, even though you're using a lot less colours, you they are incredibly colourful, but in such a good way. Yeah, they're definitely different, and I definitely. Well, I'm not going to go into this too much because I'll end up saying what I want to say later. Okay. About how I feel when I you know, when I draw. <laughs> But yeah, don't say you're going to talk about your feelings today, Tara. Right. Oh, going to delve into the inner depths of my feelings. <laughs> oh God, we could be here for some time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I guess uh, anything else new with you apart from that? Um, no, I can't think. So. I guess I've had been having a mini confidence crisis. Really? Yeah. No. Well, God, I mean, just when you start selling hand <laughs> over fist, you start to have a confidence crisis. Only, Are you kidding only, me? It's only since last night. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Really, you know when you do like it's just when you have a blip so I don't even know if it's a blip so I've, I've, I've been painting these like, the colourful things you were talking about with the backgrounds and everything Yeah. and then yeah. you know when you get a day and you look at them and you think I don't know if I like those as much have I lost it have I lost the knack do you know what I mean yeah yeah, it's just one of those. No, no. But the funny thing, I, I think the problem is I can no longer see the wood for the trees. So I basically do some and I'll go in and show Kevin. I'll go, what do you think to these? Like I took two in from yesterday. There was a red one and a blue one, predominantly yeah. colours. Yeah. I said, uh, what do you think to these? And I was going to tell him what I thought, but I thought, no, I'm not going to say anything. I just want to know what he thought. And he goes, oh, I really like the red one. Not sure about the blue one. And I was thinking... I quite like the blue one. I don't like the red one. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, I have no idea now. I have no idea if any of these are any good. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you've, what it is, is you've just been injected with a tiny bit of confusion. And yeah. it's made you confused about your own stuff. But we've spoken about this so many times, Tara, where I know. everyone likes different things. So what you might like, somebody else will maybe not so much. And what other people you know the really like, that? you might, might not. The problem with this, though, is, and um, this is totally off topic, but when you don't know, so say, say for example, I liked the blue one, he liked the red one. Yeah. Um, but then I, I think, I doubt myself, and I think, well, well, should I put for sale something I'm not so keen on? But I'm not the best judge of my own art. No, you're definitely not, no. Send them so, to me, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, I'll send them to you. Send them to me. But you also often like different ones as well. So. Exactly. It is all just taste. So that that, that is actually, it might be a good episode. Yeah. It's like, when, when do you know if you should try and sell a piece or not? How do you decide if that art really isn't up to your own standards or if it's just that it's not to yes. your taste? Yeah, I mean, I've had this before um where I have done a a painting I've painted a painting and I have not been sure about it at all yeah um one of the pieces actually I think I posted it on Twitter yesterday it was a throwback and it was a painting I did of um like a clear marble on a on a sheet of music so all the things were distorted and it's god I've did that about I don't know must be 10 years ago now might be slightly less I don't know but I was not confident at all about that painting and I'm still not entirely sure whether <laughs> I'm confident about it now but it, it made it onto the cover of an art magazine yeah so, I know that, that's a strange thing isn't it and, it, and, it and is I would always... never have I mean I've I would never have dreamt I mean I've done pieces since that are far more obviously I've had far more experience since then and I'm a you know you grow don't you as an artist uh, but I would I would never have dreamt that that would have happened but it did you know it's, it's strange isn't it and yet yeah, I wasn't so we're confident not about judges, it are we? not at all no because you know other, there's other paintings that I've done that I never saw the light of day yeah because I wasn't confident about it in fact 
<laughs> I've got a picture of one I did. And I, I remember snapping the canvas. So it was like on a panel and I just snapped it up because I thought, no, I, I can't, I don't feel confident about that. And funny enough, I've, I found a photo of it the other day. It was a really good painting. <laughs> oh, no. You do change your mind about things as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. I think you just have to allow your buyers to be the judge of what they like. Because don't forget, they will either buy it or they won't. If they yeah, don't like that, that piece, true. they won't buy it. But if they really like that piece, they'll go, I really want that. I know. It's so, just a hard thing, isn't it? Where it's like, is this one that is below my standards? Mm. So I shouldn't put it on there. Or is yeah. this just that this is not to my taste? It's a tricky, tricky one, thing, isn't, isn't it? Because yeah. I know what you mean. If I did a painting, like a realism painting, I spent a long time on it, and I was not happy with it now. Yeah. I would, oh, what would I do? Um, yeah, I'd have a problem showing it, I think. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? And then if you it feel is. like that, in a way, you have a guilt then. If you if you do put it up for sale, you almost have a, feel, a feeling of guilt because you're like, well, I'm not keen on that one. So but do I want then, it on someone else's wall for a start? Or and and I feel bad that I've sold someone a piece that I'm not happy with as the artist. It's hard, isn't it? But then that piece you could put on social media and it could be on my people could be going, Oh wow, I absolutely love this. Well maybe that's maybe that's how you should gauge it then. Maybe well, put no, it on social you got, me- Sorry, you got that problem with social media that it, there's also the algorithm bias isn't there oh, <laughs> so yeah. it's just like yeah you know I don't know yeah but no what I was gonna say was instead of putting it up for sale just put it up as an image just to see what people how Think. people react to it yeah yeah tricky yeah that very algorithm tricky. we were talking about this earlier weren't we not to talk about twitter or anything but I'm very new to twitter and it still baffles me you're still having to give me little lessons on twitter Tara aren't you yeah, but there's these before. three little stars which I didn't know about at the top and it says and somebody had put this post up saying you should click the three little stars because the algorithms are playing with your posts and all that and sure enough clicked on the little stars and then it says you can either do top tweets or most recent. So I said, oh, I'll click on most recent then. I didn't know a single person <laughs> that was posting. I thought I'd never seen any of this stuff before. No idea what the people I normally engage with are. So it just goes to show, doesn't it? Yeah, how, how it is choosing for you. Yes. It is. Yeah. 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 Totally is. Anyway, we should get on to today's topic. I don't know how long we've been recording for <laughs> <laughs> but we need to get onto the topic so today we're talking about why it is so difficult to talk about our own art and I know Tara that you have a particular problem I mean we all do really but you've got a real problem with it so, so tell us more about that yeah well this started because of the NFT thing and it's don't worry it's not gonna be about NFTs but basically in the digital art world they have a lot of Twitter spaces which is it's, it's like, I guess, a chat area, a ver- but you verbally chat and yeah. you'll have hosts and they might be talking about a topic or something. And you also, there was also some Zoom calls. And, and I went on a few of these, not quite knowing what they were going to be about at the time because I was quite new to it. And I thought it was going to be they were teaching you something, which, which they do on some. But this one, I went on and it was, they were basically pulling people up out of the audience. They can't see you, but they just got your Twitter icon. They were pulling you up to talk about your art. And I'm like, I suddenly, I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, oh my God, I definitely don't pick me. Please don't <laughs> pick me. Um, but the idea of being picked is that in this space, you will get buyers in these spaces and they will actually buy your art from hear you, hearing you talk about it and liking the piece. So they started calling all these people up and, and they were talking about their art. And I have to say, some was interesting, but <clears throat> some was just so pretentious beyond belief. Mm. Yeah, talking about, oh, the symbolism in there and this represents this and this represents this. And I, I shouldn't say it because maybe, maybe to, to them they do. Yeah. I don't know. But it was just it's so not me so not how I feel about my art and so I actually during one of these calls I came off because I was (laughs) first of all it it, some of it was like I told you it got a bit too much but also I'm like I'm so terrified they're going to pick on me 
I have nothing to say mm. about my work. Not that I don't like my work, but I don't know how to talk about it. And so I said to you, I think this might make a good topic because I have no idea of how to talk about my art. And funnily enough, after having done this podcast, and it just shows if you start and think, and think about it, I've started kind of forming some more ideas. So we can maybe talk about those as we go along. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know what you mean, though, about, <laughs> you see, I'm a bit, I'm similar in that, some of my work, right? Yeah. So, for instance, my crushed Coke can. Yeah. Believe it or not, there is a lot of messages in that painting and a lot of stuff in that painting that represents stuff. Stuff. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and, but I wouldn't necessarily bring that up because it feels very personal. So if I was on that call and somebody brought that Coke can up, I would find it hard to say, yeah, well, there's a lot of things in there that, uh, you know, and, and then start harping on about what means what. I could I could say, oh, you know, and this represents that and da, 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 da. I mean, I think the most, and the most I might have touched on is at the time was that it was pretty much a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> of how I was feeling at the time but I am not a pretentious artist I'm not and I don't want to come across that way and regardless of whether there's anything behind my art or not that's for me to know and other people to decide what's whether they can work it out or not I guess it can be what it means to them anyway couldn't it exactly exactly and I was going to touch on that a bit later but um yeah, so I'm not the best at talking about my art either, certainly not in that way. And yeah, I know what you mean. A lot of people will sort of talk about things like that. And it's like, so do you know <sighs> what? Everybody's going to be really pleased now that we're doing an episode on how to talk about your art. And we both said we're not very good at talking about our art. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. to oh, well, I can talk about my art, but I can't, I, I can't talk nonsense about it. No, I mean, I, that sounds awful. I don't, nonsense sounds awful, but I'm not going to make something up about uh, and try and find meaning in something that's not there because for the sake of trying to sell something. Because sometimes I will draw a piece because I fancy drawing a, that, that yeah, thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Sometimes I'll draw an apple because I fancy drawing an apple. Not because the apple represents anything, because it, generally it wouldn't. <laughs> but, but you always have to say something if, if you want to get yeah. a little bit artsy, don't you? Yeah. You always have to say it has a meaning. Yeah. So so I, I suppose, first of all, you've got to understand why you find it hard to talk about your art and how to get over that hurdle. Yeah. Like, obviously, when you're talking to other artists. Yeah. Me, it's, personally. It's, no, generally speaking. Oh, right, So yeah. when you're talking to other artists, it's easy to talk about art, isn't it? Because because they love talking about art. You like yeah. talking about art. It's really easy to talk about art. And But when you're talking to someone else who isn't an artist and is either a viewer of the art or they're not arty at all, then you're, you're, you're often just worried that you're going to bore them, aren't you? <laughs> do, you yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about you, but generally I, I, I never mention my art in any social situation at all. I just don't bring it up. I probably should more, but I just don't because I'm assuming – if somebody's interested then they'll ask me um and generally no, no one nobody usually Aww. does I know poor me um but if somebody does ask me about it then of course you know it's something I really enjoy talking about because it's a huge part of me and who I am and my life you know um but the main thing to remember is that it should always be a two-way conversation and this makes it a lot easier when you're trying to sort of talk about your art if you're talking about your art and you're not engaging the other person in conversation, then they are going to lose interest really quickly. So um, say, for instance, I was talking to a wine connoisseur. Now, I don't like wine, don't know anything about wine. I'm still interested to understand how someone who does know about wine can detect a background note of tree or, or melon or whatever in what essentially tastes to me like vinegar. Do you know what I mean? I'm interested yeah. to know yeah. that. But if they were just to yap on and on about wine without engaging me in any way I would get really bored really quickly and I'd just zone out but if instead they ask me questions about what kind of wine I've tried what labels I tend to go for or 
they talk to me about the difference between a wine that gives me a shocking hangover and a wine that doesn't, or they ask me to try a sip of their own wine and, and tell me the things that I thought I could taste if I really concentrated. Well, you know, that would get me really engaged and I'd find the conversation quite fun and more engaging and more interested and I'd want to talk about it some more. And, of course, that then gives them the opening to talk about it more and maybe I'd buy a bottle of wine off them. Who knows? I mean, we've, we've all been in a position, you must know, Tara, I know people like this, um, that just talk at you. Oh, in- God, yes. Instead of having a conversation with you, they will just you know, those kinds of conversations can be very, very draining. So what they'll do is they'll talk to you for hours about whatever their thing is. Um, but they never think to engage you in the conversation by asking you questions or making you feel like, you know, they're interested in your own thoughts or opinions on that. So if you're one of those people, all that's going to do is make that person then avoid the subject around you again because they are going to find you incredibly tedious. So if you want someone to be interested in what you're talking about, ask them questions. You know, what kind of art do you like? Have you ever tried painting yourself? Why would you choose that piece of art over that? That kind of thing. And and also don't forget to show an interest in in what that person does and recognize that they also have their own skills, whether that's it could be numbers or, or it could be something else creative. You'll find it a lot easier to talk about your art if you also talk and ask them questions about the things they love to do as well, because it doesn't feel like you're talking at them. It feels like you're talking with them and there's a big, big difference. And you'll find that, you know, if it's a two-way conversation, being able to talk about your art in a positive way will come a lot more naturally to you and you won't feel like you're boring the other person. Yeah, so that was my, my, that was my bullet point. <laughs> <laughs> that you're scared you might bore someone. <laughs> I'm just, just sort of leaving you to have your one-way conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tara, was I talking at you then? <laughs> yeah. I did ask you a question, though. Yeah. <laughs> was I talking at you? Yeah, what, there you go. What are your, okay, so what are your thoughts on that? So, so I want to start going through some reasons why you might not like talking about your art. Okay. And I thought one we can kick off with is that you might feel like it's showing off. Because yes. when, from when we're a kid, we are taught, like, don't boast about yeah. something. And then when you get older, you really want to, and you should be, not in a bad boasty way, but you yeah. should be talking about these things, shouldn't you? Because they almost teach us not to sell. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I guess, yeah, we just have to learn to think that it's not boasting by talking about our art. And, and in fact, like you were saying about the wine man, you'd be quite happy for someone else to talk about something they love as long as they make it interesting for you, the other person yes, as well. Absolutely. So, you know, whether that's cookering or cookie cookering or pottering, <laughs> you, you don't mind what it is and you're quite happy for someone to talk about it as long as they include you and make it interesting for you. And then other reasons I think you might not like talking about your art is maybe because it's not important to the people around you. Maybe your your family and friends just think it's this you know, little thing you do for fun. And so it's perhaps a little bit belittled. But I, I just think in that case, they're really not your audience, are they? They're not. No. They're not your, you want your cheerleaders, don't you? You at least want a few cheerleaders who are going to cheer you on. So if you haven't got them around you, perhaps you need to find some, whether that's online or in local groups, just to boost your confidence and actually find people who, who you can talk about your art with. Um, I guess there's also that thing where you don't feel like you're good enough. And I, I think we all have a little bit of that, especially it depends on who we're talking to as well, what level. So if I was talking to someone who's a non-art person, I'd perhaps feel a lot more confident than if I was talking to this big artist who I knew was do, do, doing really well. Mm. So, But I just think if you do talk about it, and I need to learn to do this, you never know who you could end up talking to. You know, you could talk to someone at a little gathering of friends and it could turn out that they know someone who owns this big gallery or they know someone who buys a lot of art for something or other. Mm. So you just don't know, do you? I know what you mean about, I mean, the showing off thing, there's a very different, a big difference between showing off something and, and sharing something. 
That's a huge yeah. difference. And you've got to remember that as an artist, you, you need to share your staff. You're not going, oh, look what I can do, because you know that there's always a better artist out there than you, and there's, uh, you know, there's always a better artist out there than them. You know, it's it's all, it's about sharing your art and, and your take on things. And it doesn't mean you're showing off. It does better. feel like that, though. Yeah. I was going to say better is a really funny word as well because not yeah no I don't well different different no no but what I was saying is you do think certain artists are better than you and I, I will show Kevin an artist on Instagram and I say oh my god this yeah. person's art is incredible yeah. and you'll look at it and go hmm I'm not very keen yeah and, you know and I would have said that artist was like tons tons better than me mm. but he just won't see it no it's 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 yeah the wrong word it's not better it's different every yeah. artist is unique and every artist has got something unique about them well another reason i think you might not like talking about your art is because you we've you mentioned this before is because it doesn't have a big message and and you can just leave it up to the viewer like we said before you don't have to tell them what the message is you could leave them to find their own message in the piece and this i'm going to highlight this because this is one of my problems okay yeah so I don't feel that when I create a piece of art, it has a big message. So I might draw a face because I like it and I will adjust that face to, I don't know, it might look a bit more sci-fi or futuristic or steampunk or weird, but there's not a big message behind that. I haven't, I haven't tried to tell something by that. Yeah. And and that is definitely a problem of mine because I don't feel like I can weave a big story into that. And some people are very pretentious, aren't they? I think some people are reluctant to talk about their art because art has got a reputation of being pretentious and snobby. And there is a lot of it out there. But it, that snobbery isn't just in the art world either. Um, but pretentious is, is, is just something I, I can't bear. I can't no. bear it. And just because some other people are like that, it doesn't mean that we have to be or you have to be. You know, there's nothing that will put me off talking with someone more than if I even get a whiff of pretentiousness. So I certainly wouldn't want to talk to anyone else with that same air about them, I, I guess. The best way to have a good conversation with someone about art is to be confident. Even if you've got to pretend to be, but also to keep it real, even if they don't. Because keeping it real, I think a lot of people do appreciate artists that do keep it real, perhaps, don't you? Well, I hope so. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I don't think necessarily you'd be the, it would be right the right thing for you to say, there's no message behind this, I'm simply making a piece that I like. I was thinking about, <laughs> this is a real stupid thing to think about, but last night I was thinking about, do you remember Millie Vanilli? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, I used to like him in the 80s. Yeah, I an did 80s too. pop star, wasn't so, he? For anyone who doesn't know, in the 80s, there was a band called Millie Vanilli, and there was these two really looking cool guys, weren't they? Yeah. Who headed up the band and sang these very catchy, very 80s tunes. Yeah. And, and they sold quite a lot of records. And then it was all revealed that, in fact, the two guys who were in the band weren't, in fact, the guys who wrote the music, who were two quite much more ordinary-looking mm. blokes, weren't they? Not attractive, you know, not cool. Yeah. And I was thinking, that's what I need. <laughs> I need my two. But what I need is this um, really cool-looking, upfront, arty, pretentious person. I'll make the art. Yeah, and then yeah. We, I need my front person, <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll be the band behind the Millie Vanilli art thingy. Does that make sense? I, I yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I think it's always um, easier to talk about someone else's art than it is your own. Do you find that? Yeah, well, that would be a part of that, I guess. But mm. yeah, almost a salesperson, an actor up front would be quite yeah. useful. But yeah. I have the bird by talking about that. <laughs> does your art have to have a big message i don't know i mean i don't think you should ever say there's no message in this it is what it is that's really not interesting to the viewer is it they have to read into it yeah i mean yeah i don't know it's it's i think not having a message at all is, is i think there probably is something in everything you do you just don't even you don't really know what it is coming out but maybe do you, yeah, yeah, I mean, one thing I was talking to you about the other day, talking about the pretentious thing as well, is um, 
and this is one of my problems as well. So yeah. I'm going to flag yeah. this, one of my problems, and not liking the pretentious thing, yeah. is that I will automatically resort to humour. Yes. Well, that's and not a bad thing. I know, but I did tell you the other day about the person on, on Twitter, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll just tell the story. Basically, someone on, tw- on Twitter saw, there's a picture I'd done, and I can't remember what, oh yes, it was like a, a woman, and she was supposed to be steampunk, but she ended up looking more of like a, a clown, to be honest. Yeah. But an interesting clown. Mm. And the woman said to me something like, I'd love to know what she's thinking with the, with a the stare she's got or something. Mm. And me, resorting to humour, as I always do, I said, I think she was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't help myself. <laughs> but of course, that is not what I should say. I should have just left it there for her to think, or I could say, what do you think she's thinking? That's the, that would have been, now you see, that would have been the right one. What yes, do you but... think she's thinking? Because people love to be asked questions yeah. and they will feel compelled to then look at that piece and go, oh yeah, what do I think they're thinking? Absolutely right, what you just said. Yeah. I think all artists, they need to know what to say if someone asks about their work. You almost need to have something prepared in your head for any scenario like that. You know, so for example, if you're in an exhibition, right, and somebody comes up to you and asks you a question about your art, I think you actually, you need to have something already in your mind to say for those scenarios. You almost need to have something prepared in advance. Yeah. So for example, you know, I'm often asked, why do I paint the things I paint? And my go-to answer is that I like to find the beauty in the ordinary. It's one sentence that's all it is, but it's a, it's a, an immediate answer I have. I like to find the beauty in the ordinary. Every artist needs something like that. And, and Tara, you know, maybe your sentence could be, I like to see what, I like to paint what I see behind the eyes, or I like to paint the wonder in someone rather than the someone, or I like to paint a portrait of the person's mind rather than just the face, or I like to paint a person from the inside out, that kind of thing. They're yeah. just simple one-line sentences, but it's something you have immediately you can say straight away when somebody asks you. Because yeah, you I mean, do, there I... isn't, there, it's not like that's a lie. You, I mean, you often include characters around a face, like their eyes and things like that. And I know that in the past, you, you say, for instance, if you were going to do a portrait of a photographer, I can almost guarantee that behind the eye, around the eyes, there would be a little character with a camera. Yeah, I don't do it anymore so much, though. No, that's, but, but I did say that. I did used to say that about there. It's that first hmm. line that you said about I like to paint the thing behind the, the person. I can't behind the eyes, yeah. yeah, behind the eye as well as the actual person. That was sort of one of my lines. Yeah. But because I'm not doing that so much more anymore, I, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I do need something. But you still, you're still painting. Your, the personality. You're not painting. Yeah, you like to paint the personality rather yeah. than the person. Yeah, quite, I guess. you know, that kind of thing, because that's not an untruth. No, it, it isn't. You're, you're finding something about that person that's more more um, than just the person it's themselves. Yes, you could probably see that there's a likeness, as in if you put a photograph against that person, they might see something in it that reminds, uh, that is, says something about them, but it won't be necessarily their, um, what they, yeah, what they look, look like. like. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's that's the that makes things easy if you've got a, a go to sentence, just one or two sentences about your art that you you immediately have, rather than like, oh, I don't know, uh, what you know, I just paint stuff I like to paint. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because that's not interesting. But always, if you if you do have a problem like that, and somebody said, you know, the, what you said about asking the question, what do you think it means? Or you could always say that. Well, if you don't know what it means, you can always say, I'm leaving it to you to decide. That's for the viewer to decide what it means. Yeah, I mean, I've put in here as well that sometimes you do just feel like you're making nice pictures, don't you? Well, exactly, yes. I mean, sometimes I paint something because I like, I I mean, the Coke bottles, for instance. I love that the, the... the idea of the bright blue sky and the glass and all the the trickles of water coming down the glass. I wanted to paint that because I wanted to paint that. There was no meaning behind that. There was an element of nostalgia, though. If someone asked you. 
I'd say I I'd say to the ordinary, whatever that line was. Well, yeah, I like to find the beauty in the ordinary, but also perhaps in that piece, well, yeah, there was an element of nostalgia in that piece because it's a classic Coke bottle, the ones we used to have as kids sort of thing with the with the classic sort of those stripy straws. So there's an element of nostalgia in that painting. But it was, I didn't set out to do it for that reason. I set out to do that because I wanted to paint the glass and I wanted to paint the the drips. But if somebody asks, that's not good enough in yeah. a way. I need yeah. to say, well, that, and, and I'm not lying there is definitely an element of nostalgia to the, in that painting to me. The nostalgia appeared afterwards almost. Yeah. I, and then yeah. I sort of think, well, yeah, I know, I, I now know why I painted that because it makes me feel nostalgic when I look at it. Yeah. Sometimes you don't necessarily know why you're painting something, but there may be, maybe there really is a reason. I mean, the marbles I, I paint, well, yeah, I love marbles. I used to play them at my nan's house and, and that is probably why it's a nostalgic feeling again. But, it's not something I would necessarily talk about unless somebody asked. But if somebody asks me, I have that. I have that answer. Um, answer. Yeah. Uh, I guess as well uh, as well. We've been talking about talking about the big thing, but there's also talking about individ- individ- individual individual <laughs> individual pieces, isn't there? Because obviously, when you go on social media, and I've been quite lax with this lately because I've been so concentrating on Twitter, where everything's short. Whereas I used to write quite a long piece for Instagram, I haven't anymore. But I find it a bit easier on social media, to be honest, because you don't actually have to write, because writing is the same as talking, isn't it, really? You don't have to write about the piece. You can write about yourself, can't you? Yes. Or something that's happened in your life. And it only has to be slightly, slightly related to your picture. So like the other mm. day, I, I'd drawn a face that looked quite eccentric yeah uh and a little bit odd and so I talked about that time I've spoken about before I went to an event and I was the real odd one out I didn't fit in yeah so you can just find something that's kind of loosely related and put it together it doesn't have to be about the art and I think I I like that better almost on social media you've got time to think about it as well haven't you you've got time to whereas when somebody just outright asks you um, and you you are face to face. You you're a bit like uh, <laughs> rabbit in headlights. You know, a good. I always think with social media, a good one for you would just be to simply say, "What is she? Uh, what what's she thinking? Or what's he thinking?" Um, I, there's a, there was a there's somebody on our group. Oh, I should remember who it is. <laughs> Sorry if you are listening, because I'm sure they probably are. Um, who used to post and she used to put, "What's the story?" Oh yes, uh, Eva. Eva, Eva, that was yeah. it. Eva, yeah, yeah. Now, now she used to she used to post a, a drawing, and and basically on every post she would put what's the story, and you'd kind of have to guess what the scenario is. So, and that is actually pretty genius for, for social media because instead of somebody asking you a question about that art, oh, you're asking them immediately, and they're too busy finding out, trying to think of an answer to even ask you what it's about so if you if you're thinking oh god what do I say when somebody says to you Tara on that those calls what yeah. you know what tell me about this piece what does your, it mean to you your go-to answer could be well that you know that is for the viewer to decide you know I'm leaving up to the I know my own thoughts but if I say those thoughts and it doesn't allow the viewer They'll, they'll, you know, they'll think, oh, well, that's what it means. I want to know what it means to them. Yeah, it's and tricky, though, for those things because those things tend to have a host. So I don't think it would work in that no. thing because they would find it a little bit, uh, you know. Yeah. Your, well, your thing would last you, two seconds. <laughs> well, that's where your other thing could come in handy. Yeah. You know, I, I like to paint the person from inside out yeah well i do have some more ideas further down but there we Ooh, go okay Ooh, yeah. i'm looking forward to hearing those <laughs> so uh yeah so where are we i'm lost oh, we're all over the place i might as well just throw my notes away because we're, <laughs> we're going all over the place at the moment um what you could also do is you could talk about the feeling it gives you creating the art so if somebody says why do you why do you paint or why do you paint the things you do you know um, why do you paint realism? 
for me, it is actually a form. I'm rubbish. I've said this a million times. I cannot meditate. I've tried and all I do is I manage to write my shopping list and decide all the things I'd forgotten I needed to do. And then I get up feeling stressed because I'm like, oh my gosh, I just remembered this. I just cannot do that. I can't shut my mind off at all. Um, when I'm painting, it is a form of meditation for me. And in fact, it's one of only two things I do. I don't want to know what the other one is. <laughs> Oh, sorry, three things I do. <laughs> I better get that one in. I'll be in trouble. Where I could say my mind is not thinking about other, thi- other things. <laughs> so the other the other one is scuba diving and, yeah. Yeah, don't I'm say not, what the not other going one on is. About third. Okay, so, so that's when I'm totally in the zone. You know, every ounce of my mental energy is is flowing from my brush. It's not thinking about shopping lists or the pile of ironing I've got indoors or the fact that, you know, I haven't, done this that the other well the spot on the ceiling yeah (laughs) it's it's just I am in the zone and my mind is at rest and you know that's that's something I could talk about I could talk about actually you know it's not so much about the piece it's about the feeling I have when I created it it's my mind was absolutely peaceful and you know that's what I get out of painting um you know um they might say what draws you to a certain paint a certain subject you know I mentioned earlier that I like to paint ordinary things but for me it's it's usually things that reflect the light in an interesting way so again I've got a sentence or two ready for those scenarios you know yeah and those two things you've just said Mm. about the feeling it gives you and the subjects you're drawn to they are the key areas yeah I think for me yes and um now this it's going to sound really naff what I'm going to say next um, because I was thinking about the feeling I get when I paint. It's nothing rude, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now this uh, this is really going to sound naff. But here we go. So when I paint, I completely lose myself in the process. I get a little rush of butterflies when I see a face appearing on the page. And I think that is maybe the crux of it. It's a, it's like that feeling, meeting someone new when you fancy them and your heart does that little skip a beat thing and you get butterflies in your stomach. So I think, in fact, I'm meeting a new person. That is so cool. I love that. That last bit, that last bit where you said at the end there that you that feel like you're a new meeting person. a new person for the first time and I've got the butterflies. That's really really good really interesting and it's not a lie is it You're it's telling not a lie absolutely. no and it is like meeting that person that you quite fancy yeah. although you don't have to quite fancy them it could just be that meeting someone new and even if you just click with them it's that you do you know. get butterflies when you met me tara no <laughs> really didn't. <laughs> really didn't. Uh, oh charming <laughs> Maybe you need butterflies because to... i was nervous yeah about meeting you <laughs> Oh, yeah, big scary, I get big when scary I'm, me. Although big sometimes I, I do get nervous when I'm painting, so maybe it's, it's all that though. I thought you were going to think that sounded really naff, but no, yeah, no, I don't because I think you thought it was going to sound naff. Yes, and that's but, the thing, isn't it? You thought it was going to sound naff. I didn't think that sounded naff at all, but I could tell you thought it sounded naff, but it was ultimately that is what you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I need to put it in nice words somehow, don't I? What you need is to have that sentence. I mean, if you were to go on my website, I'm going to have to go on it now because I can't remember exactly what it says. Um, You should have, every artist really should have an artist statement. Sorry, if you can hear me clicking in the background, I'm quickly going on about it. Uh, I'm going on it now. Okay, so everyone should have an artist bio and an artist sent statement. And that is in case any, I mean, a lot of people that have interviewed me or, put, you know, put anything of mine in the um, art magazine, they'll say, I need your bio. And I will immediately point them to my website and say, my bio is on my about page. And they take it from that and they can edit it down or whatever if they want to, but it's there. But every artist really should also have an artist statement. So... Um, inspired, mine is inspired by the ordinary. I, I strive to capture the playful light of often the most simplest of objects to make them sing. I have to feel it in order to paint it. The ability to do this is my most important tool for a successful painting and one that can only come from within. Now, it's it's my statement. 
Yeah. Now, your statement needs to be something similarly written to that where you've always got that art statement saying something like, I get that rush of nerves when I meet someone for the first time. That that would be an amazing artist statement. Yeah, I don't know if it should just be the rush. Should it be the, about, you know, the, the rush you get when you fancy someone for the first time? Well, it, it depends because you paint a lot of women. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't, so they'd be questioning. <laughs> to, to be honest, I don't fancy all the men I paint either. A few of them are quite hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm questioning my sexuality. Uh, yeah. I don't what think about it... when I paint a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. No, I think I think maybe you don't have to say you fancy them. <laughs> or maybe it's it's either nerves or excitement. It's yeah. Those, I it? mean you get I get nerves and excitement when I meet people. It doesn't mean to say I fancy them, but I, I I'm like, oh, you, you know, when you excited me. to see them. <laughs> was like, no, again, I was nervous because you were interviewing me. <laughs> oh no, like, oh. when I met you, you didn't know oh. you were meeting me, so you didn't have to be oh, nervous. Oh god, I didn't did have to be nervous. Uh, no, 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 no. Anyone who wants to know how Tara and I met, there's a story behind that, but that's in an old episode. Yeah. But yeah. Um I really, do you know what, Tara? You, you've totally nailed it with that. But you just yeah. need to, you, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent nailed it. But you just need to um, put it into a sentence somehow yeah. that a coherent sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you say not coherent. You know what I mean? Something yeah. that's easy yeah. to say. Yeah. And again, that could be your go-to thing if somebody comes up to you. What What is it about this piece? Um. Also, I think you can also talk about the medium you use and why um because some mediums that you be really precise some that you be really free and you can also talk about i mean i don't think this is the first thing necessarily you talk about but you might use mediums in a different way and which is what i'm doing at the moment i guess it's it's Mm. probably not a traditional way to use charcoal is it or mixed media so you if you do something very differently that might be something you could talk about as well yeah definitely you could talk about why you began creating in the first place. So, you know. Why did you begin creating in the first place? I haven't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was really helpful. That sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> but, but um, I mean, I'm talking about in general conversation, you know. If, they, yeah. if, if you're a bit thrown, you can kind of like throw them off and talk about something else a little bit and say, well, I, I started painting because, mind you, that probably wouldn't work. Yeah. I don't know. But... Well, you could talk about how you started painting when your kids were little and you painted the mural, couldn't you? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Why did I create art? The, the thing with me, I suppose my, if there is, a, if you could call it an interesting story, is that I used to paint, uh, I used to draw, sorry, when I was a kid, as most kids do. And then I stopped because I found other things like, you know, being a teenager and boys and all that. Um, And then I guess you could call me a, well, a late bloomer, couldn't you? Because I didn't actually start again really until I was about 30. And that's because I was drawing with my kids and started sort of painting murals on their bedroom walls. And I was like, wow, I'd forgotten how much I love this, you know. 20 years on here I am and it's the biggest part of my life it's it's just I couldn't I don't even know what I would do without it it's it's just such a huge part of who I am now that sounds a bit cliche doesn't it but it's true it is a big part of who I am so if somebody buys a painting from me they're buying a big piece of me in a way yeah are you there yeah I thought you'd gone. No, not to get a coffee. No, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this. In fact, that that you could even say that there doesn't necessarily have to be this big story behind every piece of art. The story is I've created that. And that's a massive part of my life. And this piece has come from me, and it is it what, for whatever reason it's there. It's come. It's it's huge to me. You know, what I was sitting there thinking about when I'd gone quiet was you were talking about and they get a, a big piece of me and I'm thinking, yeah, they really are. They're going to get a big piece of your ass if they buy the most recent ones, aren't they? You know, nobody, anyone listening to this probably doesn't know that, uh, yeah. Well, that the you've subject, drawn your bum. The subject of the a couple of uh, the things I'm working on at the moment is... Um, it's your is, bum. It's my bum. Well, not my, well, it is my bum, but I've, it's very 
loosely based on my mum. <laughs> because no one else was going to model for me. No. No okay. one was going to model for me. And in fact, it was quite funny because Charlie, my son, he walked into my art studio the other, the other day and he said, Mum, he said, um, he's 25, by the way. He, he walked, he said, Mum, why have you got two huge asses on your wall? <laughs> And I said, thanks, Charlie. I said, that's my bum you're, you're insulting. And he said, I think you've been a bit kind. Oh, well, that's nice, <laughs> typical, isn't it? typical boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it's you don't have to necessarily just talk about that piece or your art. You could talk about, you could kind of turn the conversation a little bit in other directions, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think you can also talk about the colours you're drawn to, mm. if there are particular colours you draw in your work. So I'm at the moment having a red and blue phase. Oh, you're going through your red and blue period, uh, Tara. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like to call it a phase on the period. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're at that age now, aren't we? We it's are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, though, because it's I, I with mine, I, you know, there's two sides. I've always said there's two sides of my art. One's very bright and colourful and one's complete opposite. It's very dark and that. But when I like, when I go for colour, I really like to go for colour. And my favourite pieces are the really colourful ones, like the Coke or the big marble paintings, the ones with lots of colour. But you definitely have colours you're drawn to. I mean, yellow and purple, that was your... You did go through a yellow and purple phase, Tara. I did definitely go through a yellow... And then I went through a yellow and a pale blue phase as well yeah. with the so yeah and the funny thing was I was not dictated to but I was <laughs> dictated to because I used to like sticking with um you know the near color the 15 pack yeah yeah I would stick to the colors in there and yeah. I never ever wanted to buy well I bought an odd few more but I never wanted mm. to go for the big set because I always find if I have too many colors I don't like what I create yeah, I like this very limited palette, so I never wanted to stray far from there. So I guess I would stick with what was in that tin. But but you might also do the colours because you like the mood it creates. As yes, well. and that's what that's when I do the darker paintings. They definitely have a lot more mood, you know. Yeah, and you also might might like painting the way you do because you get happy accidents. And I would definitely imagine this is something that happens to abstract artists especially every that, artist I mean I've had happy accidents and I love them but it's that thing it's like I deliberately make happy accidents happen or sometimes sad accidents as well but by using like kids sponge brushes and being broad mm. it, that is something I could talk about as well how I purposely use these materials so I can't yeah. be detailed and you'd probably talk about the complete opposite things that you do use so you can get that you know the preciseness yeah I mean I, I've had happy accidents and I think happy accidents are what teach you to paint that you learn so much from a happy accident but going also just going quickly back to that colors you were talking about you know I was just thinking you know if people asked about my art one of the things they might ask is wow you've got two different I haven't got two different styles exactly the same style but two very different moods so you might find my, say, for instance, we'll, we'll go, let's go back to the Coke bottles again. You know, you've got that cheerful, you know, big, bright, colourful painting. And then if you look at the other, the one perhaps I drew, I painted of um, a hand holding a whiskey glass in the dark, you know, they're very, very different moods, aren't they? Now, partly when I do these darker paintings, it, it's not because I'm in a dark place or a dark mood or anything like that. It's nothing like that. But I do think I have, um, there are times when I feel far more that way inclined where I want to paint more moody, dark paintings. And then I'll go, oh, I really fancy painting something bright and colourful. You know, it, it's not because I'm miserable. It's not. But you could you could think that, but it isn't. It's just that I have different moods and I, I paint accordingly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, things like, the uh, hand with the whiskey glass. What was interesting is I was actually asking my, uh, my, my own self questions as I was painting it. So, for instance, you know, who is this man waiting for in this dark place, in this dark bar? Who, you know, every piece of art can have so many different stories behind it. You can actually make up because that makes it so much more interesting for the viewer because they can often put their own story to it. Yeah, and you've almost done what we were saying in the 
about the woman who created the posts in the social media saying, what's the story behind this? It's like this caption. Yeah. It's almost like this caption thing. Come up with a caption for this photograph. I think that generates a lot more engagement. Yeah, when you ask it does. somebody a question like that. Maybe I should test it on Twitter. Put something up. Yeah, what's or maybe story? you should test it on Instagram as well. Anyway, shall we go on to our previous question or are you still... <laughs> that really long, long question. Go on then. Yeah. So... Picasso had four art period. Most famous he is blue period. As an artist, how many periods have you had? And we've got quite a lot of answers to this, so I'm going to kick it off. And Sandra, rather meanly, because I normally allocate who gets what to say, so I give her all the long ones. <laughs> and because she found that I'd already put a few on there, she's allocated me the long ones. <laughs> so I've got Andrea England Art. I'm thoroughly enjoying my swirly period at the moment. It's been going on since 2018 and keeps getting swirlier. Before that was my early work, which was mainly mainly spent messing around with different techniques and sketchbooks. My sketchbooks are still my playgrounds where I can make art that doesn't fit my style. I've got Paula Schmeidel. Just one, the unknown period. (laughs) Been there. (laughs) Yep, been there. I've got... Gabriella Pop, and she has a little symbol with the hands over the face and says, countless. <laughs> Adrian Sutherland, two, producing art and not producing art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Right, I've got Andy WR, and he says, phase one, a good thing this kid can draw because he's sod all use to anything else up to 16 <laughs> years old, they said that. <gasps> then phase two, the disillusionment of art college. Phase three, drawing architecture and buildings badly. Phase four, drawing in architecture a bit better. Phase five, ink illustrations and cartoons and wishing I could make a living at it. Ah, well, maybe that's phase six. Maybe it is. <laughs> uh, I've got Roving J. Number one, discovery. Tried all mediums, settled on watercolour. Number two, painted watercolour badly. Didn't put enough paint layers on, no depth. Number three, painted watercolour. More depth, too much paint, not enough white. Number four, trying to find that balance between colour and white. I've got Margaret Gray and she says, basically blocked and not blocked, just like Adrian Sutherland said. I guess during those times I've worked differently. Phase one, teen, painting on weekends, learning to copy. Phase two, art student, learn to draw, colour, composition. Phase three, big block, working at a print shop. The last of pasta artists. The last of the past artists up artists ah phase four kids and home big block losing a parent starting to work on my blocks phase five back to oil painting for about five years landscapes hit a wall in my work phase six big block working full time gave up on art phase seven laid off at work ageism in the workplace return to drawing painting and learning finding my style i wouldn't be where i am now without all the things in my life that have happened it's interesting, isn't it, that it's kind of art, then block, then art, then block, then yeah. art, then block, and then it's a different period in your life that sets off, you know, like the circle. So, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Michael Beckett, hide in the basement and draw, period. Uh, Conte, charcoal and figure drawing, period. Learning colour theory when you're colourblind, period. Uh, art show, period, acrylics. Damn MS and reinvention, period. Art card and eBay period, watercolour mostly. Meander all over the place period. Alcohol marker and... Sorry, alcohol marker. (laughs) Oh, my God. He's drinking a lot. Oh, Oh, no. 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 Oh, dear. (laughs) Sorry, Michael. Alcohol marker and fountain pen period. Oh, dear. That's the current period he's in now. Yeah. (laughs) We just want to reiterate. Michael did say alcohol marker. They're not two separate things. It's not alcohol, comma, marker. No. <laughs> oh. I, I've got Jewel Mulder and, and she says, I'm in Picasso's collage period. That's for about four years now. Being blessed, not really with ADHD. I just lost count. Uh, Newman Art. Well, I started with anime slash manga and character creating. Then I focused on designing tattoos or illustrating concepts and ideas. Then I wanted to basically paint with any material at hand. And now I don't know anymore. I think it's all up to the muses. Ha ha. I've got Chaco Kid. 
Am I allowed to say that word? <laughs> you keep saying this. What you're actually doing, Tara, is, is drawing attention to okay. the words. <laughs> okay. Shaco Kid. Crap. Learning crap. Better crap. Experimental crap. Becoming my crap. Crap turns to gold. Well, it's a good job I am I'm going to allow that word because otherwise it would just be beep. Learning yeah. beep. Better yeah. beep. Experimental beep. Becoming my beep. Beep turns to gold. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've got imaginings by Karen. Exploring period, followed closely by the experimental period and always the playful period. So, uh, yeah, we have a brand new question for you, which is, how does your art reflect your personality? So how does your art reflect your personality? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. And I didn't even look at what the question was. Um, I think at the moment, because I started to push it a little bit towards science fiction... Mm. And that is a genre that I really like in film and books. So there we go. Yeah, how about you? good. How about, how about you? Uh, I have this two sides to my art. One's quite dark and moody and the other one's bright and cheerful. And maybe that's because I'm a Gemini. So as always, you can tweet us your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which you haven't joined. I highly suggest you do. Uh, we'll put the question up there and also on the Facebook page and, of course, on our Instagram, which is Kick in the Creatives. Yep, so we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And, of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast... Oh, we'd love it if you would give us a little review. They do brighten our day, don't they, Tara? They really <laughs> or just do. just a star rating if you don't have much time. It all helps. Uh, and also, if you go over to our website, you can sign up for our newsletter and that will keep you informed on what challenges we've got coming up and all the podcasts. And also, we put some hints and tips if you are trying out our challenges, just some ideas to keep you going. And don't forget, if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help us um, keep this Kick in the Creatives podcast going, you can support us by buying us a coffee. And you can find the link to that on our website. It's called Kofi. And we want to say thank you to our latest supporters. And they are Padraig. Thank you so much, Padraig. Really appreciate that. Derek. Um, Derek says, deserving of all the support in helping us see what we miss. Um, and Louise Gaul, thank you for the inspiration. So thank you all so, so much. Really means a lot. Yeah, so thank you a lot. So that's it for this week. Um, and we'll be back again soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Okay, right, let's start. <clears throat> oh, where's the beginning? Okay, are we ready? Yes, oh, you're, I can still see you. Can you? Yeah. You can't. I can't stop. I can barely see you. But I'm not. You I can't, can't see face me. It's looking incredulous. Incredulous. <laughs> no, I can see you. I don't know what that means. I clicked on the eye. Hide I yourself. Yeah, but that's whether you see yourself and that's it blimey I'm, <laughs> i need another coffee this morning <laughs> oh my god